Hello and welcome to the next lecture on uh, wireless and mobile communication. I am Professor Budhadeepa Bhattacharya of UAT University. Uh, on last day's lecture, when we discussed, it was uh, basically that we discussed was on the cellular shape, and also we had um, briefed on the position of a co-channel cell uh, or the concept of frequency reuse. In that context, we had also discussed that if any particular geographical region, when it is covered with a small cell, a small cell or a small region, what we call it, a hypothetical region or called a cell, uh, there is a provision that we can reuse the same frequency bands or the same frequency or the same channels at a different position, okay, and that is where we the reusability of the same band. Is going to happen and that is what the main concept was uh, when we discuss on frequency reuse and in la in context to that this is a particular example we have con considered and we have also mentioned that in this case we we are <coughs> bothered with a particular equation which is given by n and this is equal to i square plus i j plus j square now this particular equation holds true uh, only if we do this following that when we are moving in any direction i times or j times in any direction along the each branch okay of a particular cell and then we anti clockwise we have a 60 degree rotation okay. 60 degree anti rotation so if this is the case, then we are actually getting the frequency reuse cell. This actually gave rise to something which we call as an example like this, where we have considered that when we, we have something like an i equals to 2 and j equals to 1, which in this case is the example, we actually are getting a scenario where this particular red cell is being repeated somewhere over here, while considering the fact that if I, this branch has moved i times, and one times it has moved to j times or even if we go in this way it is i times and there is a j time movement okay similarly here it was i equal to 3 and j equal to 2 this also resulted in one very important observation that n can't be can't be any value this is a very important aspect that n cannot be assumed to be taking any values okay so it should strictly follow the rule that is i square plus i j plus j square. So, this lecture we discuss on the derivation of why we are actually considering that equation for n equal to i square plus ij. So, in light of this, let us have the, 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 the derivation in this way. Let us go directly in here. So, this is a particular cell. This is a particular cellular architecture that we have and in that we are actually having something like seven eight cells you can see this is n equal to seven once again so n equal to seven please understand that if even in your exams or in if anything is not given to you n is equal to seven is the most standard uh, or uh, conventional number of cells in a cluster that is being considered in most of the textbooks and in many of the examples you will find then n equal to 7 is a very standard one so this is again one standard one taking an example so you can see seven cells are here and we have a reuse cell over here somewhere. So this is a reuse cell. Why we know it is a reuse cell? Because this C1 is the index. So C1 is here. So it has been repeated somewhere over here. Okay. So in that way, suppose in this way, if, if we just go back to once again, so again, it's like i times over here and j times over here. So it's i equal to 2 and j equals 1 or j equals to 2, i equals 1, whatever we did. So let us, let us remove this. Uh, this this part okay now uh, if we take the equation in a different just just in the way we are being presented in this case we are using the cosine rule that is given by over here this is the fundamental trigonometric rule that we all know that if this is a triangle given so c square is equal to given by a and b which is the opposite end of the triangle opposite um, arms of the triangle so a square plus b square minus 2ab which is again a b and the angle between subtained by this small a and small b so this is capital c so this is what we are going to happen we are going to check on this and we are going to apply it 
Second part is you can see here we have categorically mentioned something which is known as R1 and this is what we call as R. So R is basically the radius of the cell. Radius of the cell. R dash is not the radius of the cell. R dash is something like the distance between. So this is 2R1 as you can observe 2R1. 2R1 means something like R1 here and R1 here. So that is what we are doing. Like in this case, the distances between like 1, 2, okay, 1 and here till C1. So, it is again considered to be 2J, 2R1 in this case. Okay. So, this is how it is basically a distance J times the distance we being traversed, something like that. Okay. It is it's not equal to R. No way. Okay. So, what we are going to do is that we will fit in the data over here with, based on this triangle. Okay, so C1, C1, C2. So this particular triangle, if you consider this uh, red shade, if you consider, okay. So this particular um, portion is over here. So now D square is nothing but the square of this plus square of this and minus two AB. So AB and cos of the angle being subtended over here, which in this case is 120, which is quite obvious because it's again from the trigonometry it will come that this is equal to 30 whereas this one is supposed to be 30. So, all are based on the assumption that this is a purely hypothetical ideal hexagon that we are using. So, all these angles and all this will come from the geometry of the hexagon itself. So, if you consider this now, if you substitute all this data, you are coming with a solution that I square plus J square, okay. So, I square plus J square common 2R1 that whole square plus ij 2r1 whole square. Again, if we take 2r1 common here, so we will take its 2r1 whole square into i square plus j square plus ij. So, please keep in mind that this is what we are going to have. So, somewhere down the line, we have to relate this d with respect to something as 2r1, okay, and n. So, that is one of the idea. By While deriving it, this is how we have to go. So, now, two very important distance. Okay, we call it the distance has to be introduced. The first thing is what is D? D is basically this is first cell, so this one, okay, and C1 is repeated over here. So basically, this D represents the reuse distance, we call it here. Check. So this is what we call as the reuse distance or D, okay, and this is given by square root 3n multiplied by. Again, this comes from the geometry, of course, and if you take this, because this was equal to d square, so hence this becomes 3n multiplied by r square. Why we are trying to do this? Because we want to relate, now we somehow, we have to relate this r1 to r. That's what the main idea is, because we need to cancel out this one, because we already have found out something over here. n is here, and the right hand side i square plus ij square. So, somehow this 3 r square should be related to this 2 r 1 square and this forms the next discussion which is known as the adjacent channel cell and the distance from the adjacent channel cell. So, basically 3 r square is basically the distance from the adjacent channel. So, this distance is the adjacent channel cell distance and this is given by 3 r square. Again, you can prove this from this particular triangle if you wish to find out that what is this r okay what is this value of r okay you will get to know that this is basically by given by the cos of 120 degree or cos of 30 degree if you consider so r by r prime and it will come as 2 r 1 whole square equal to 3 r square so this is again very trivial uh, very simple uh, um, trigonometric uh, idea um, equation that we are going to have. So, basically the objective is to relate this R with respect to R1. So, what we are going to do is we are relating this R and R1 by using this triangular rule and we are trying to find out what is R. So, basically you have something of an equation like R1 divided by R and this is equal to cos of 30. Okay. So, basically R prime it becomes R multiplied by cos 30 and this is what we are getting over here. Okay. So, this is square root 3 by 2 okay. and this is r. So, basically r prime is given by square root 3 by 2 into r. So, in this case if you 
take a whole square uh, of all, all this so now you take this 2 over here so 2 r prime is square root 3 r so take a whole whole square so it becomes 2 r prime whole square is 3 r square so this is where we are actually getting this particular equation so we substitute everything so naturally this gets cancelled out 3 gets cancelled out so we are left with n equal to epsilon plus a square so this is the fundamental rule to detect to select the number of cell in a cluster so this is a very very important observation that we are getting most of the cases in most many of the textbooks you will find that the derivation won't be given especially the book that we usually refer is here or Rappaport there you will not find that much of a, a detailed derivation of this n equal to i square plus j uh, plus a i j but it is actually a natural question that why we are going to use a particular or a certain equation for that matter so this is the basic rule that there are other methods to finding the n equals to i square j but this is one of the commonest of the easiest method to find Okay. So, in this case, we have learned two very important things. One is the reuse distance. Please make sure that the reuse distance is the distance between the co-channel cells. So, reuse distance, reuse distance between the co-channel cell. Whereas, the adjacent channel cell, I mean, it's, it's not mentioned, but the distance between... Um, there is something called a distance between adjacent channel. This will be very um, helpful. Both of this will be very useful when we are going to check the interference. So, let's take a very simple and a small example in this case. Uh, like we, we, we have discussed, like consider a single high power transmitter when we are having a uh, 40 voice channel and in light of that or oh, it's an it's it's spread spread it over uh, 100 odd um, 140 kilometers that is present with the available spectrum uh, and if this area is equally divided into seven smaller areas uh, each supported by the lower trot power transmitter so what is the coverage area of the each cell so this is very 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 basic of one of the example that we are looking at so as we know already that we have to take care of the scenario that this 40 voice channel the total um, 40 voice channel needs to be divided okay over this whole area so if this coverage area of each cell if we are considering okay if you are considering uh, so the area is equally divided into seven se smaller segments so basically if we consider the coverage area of each cell it is nothing but total area divided by number of participants and that gives rise 140 divided by 7 which is nothing but 20 kilometer square so this is each cell will cover now total number of voice channel available over the entire interval so earlier it was 40 voice channel okay now since now in this case 30 percent you can observe here low power transmitter so that each cell supports 30 percent of the channel transmitter okay so 30 percent is 0.3 multiplied by 40 so this is around 12 channels per cell okay so if this is what we are observing why it is 0.3 because each supported low power transmitter has 30 percent of the total channels here so this is a 12 channel per cell now you have seven number of cells such cell so 7 multiplied by 12, 84 channels available. So earlier it was 40 channels over the entire interval. Now we have extended it to 84 channels. So this is the basic advantage of using a frequency reuse and the basic knowledge of reusability of the same frequency pattern. Next lecture we are going to discuss on the handoffs and we will brief on whatever we have learned so far on the cellular shape and the specific specifications related to cellular